Hi and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. I'm Atik Ahmad Bharti, a fourth generation homeopath with over 25 years of professional experience and practice in this field of healing. The Homeopathy Health Show is the online voice of homeopathy around the world, promoting and raising awareness of this truly unique system of healing, which is suitable for all ages, young and old. Every week I invite guests from the world of homeopathy to come and share their experiences, their work, offer insights and essentially talk all things homeopathy. Why not visit www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast button to listen to the latest episodes. So let's begin today's show here on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show here on the UK Health Radio Network. This is indeed the world's largest radio talk show on homeopathy. And uh, if that wasn't enough, it's also available on all the major podcast platforms. Now, I'm so, so happy to welcome back the one and only Marcus Fernandez to today's show. He is the principal and founder of CHE, which is the Centre for Homeopathic Education based in the UK. Marcus has an absolute wealth of knowledge, experience, and overall magnetic zeal. And I actually mean that, I truly do. Um, when, as far as homeopathy is concerned, he's just as passionate, if not more so, than uh, myself. <laughs> Marcus himself is not only the principal, but he is also a teacher, he's an author, and he's a fellow podcaster. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> now, the podcast that Marcus presents is aptly called The Home Prescriber. And it is available on all the podcast platforms, so do please check that out, or also visit chehomeopathy.com for more information. Now, it's no secret that Marcus has a truly inspiring goal and objective, certainly for those living in the UK, and that is to see a homeopathic kit in every household. And you know what? I think, I think it's going to happen. And that is what I'm going to talk to Marcus about, about homeopathy and this exponential curve that we're seeing, and it's so, so brilliant. Marcus, my dear friend, my dear respected yeah. friend, uh, welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. Yeah, well, thank you. What a, what an introduction. Thank you so, so, so much. Lovely to be here. How have you been? I know you've been very busy online on socials and doing various, various podcasts around the world, <laughs> but how have you been? Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, I'm. you know what? I've, I'm good. I feel really good health wise. I'm good. Um, and uh, I, I just feel good in all levels. And I think, you know, often as health practitioners and especially as homeopaths as well, I always say to, to, to students particularly that we've got to be and homeopaths that we've got to be walking the talk. We have got to be symbols of health and vitality ourselves. And I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a, a avid sort of health enthusiast or health and well being enthusiast. I'm always, you know, looking for the latest things to try. And I'm sort of, you know, really into biohacking. Uh, I don't know if you come across biohacking, but I'm very much into biohacking. Went to a conference actually uh, last in June uh, here in London called mm -hmm. the Health Optimization uh, Summit show. And it was fantastic. And all the different things now, you know, people, it was packed out. And it was really, you know, everything from ice baths uh, to infrared saunas to the latest gadgets to, to, to measure and to and to give treatments um at dna testing i mean it's 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 amazing what's actually happening out there and i'm i'm a bit of a tech geek i like to geek out on the latest tech and i just think it's incredible what is you know what's immersion but the biggest thing i see is the is really the the individualization of of health and mm. this is where homeopathy has, has fits in so well because we that's what we're about individual treatment the individual remedy uh, for the person um and it's it's coming you know as well it's just coming in the general i know there's a shift there's a real shift with people and i think it's it's amazing and it's great to see you're absolutely right you know it actually takes me on to um as far as homeopathy is concerned uh, rachel roberts from the hri as yeah, you know rachel, very well yeah. she was on a few months ago on the homeopathy health show and she said something really, really interesting, which I actually hadn't heard before. And she said that um, as far as homeopathy is concerned, even though it is massive because it's the second largest system of medicine around the world right. outside of conventional medicine, conventional healthcare, 
She said the reason that it's not taken up by by more organizations as such is because you can't patent homeopathy. How can you patent Ipecac and Belladonna and Arnica and, and whatnot, you know, and Gelsemium? Which is quite interesting, isn't it? Because it, it does paint a very broad picture of the possibilities of homeopathy, but also the truth about why perhaps it's not being pushed from the the other side of the fence. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, which is Rachel's exact, you know, absolutely right, and I think that's why I always say homeopathy truly is the medicine of the people mm. because it can't be controlled. You're dealing with really nano medicine, you know. Um, you're dealing with something that is almost well it is outside of the material world so if it's outside the material world the same rules and things don't apply <laughs> yeah. to this you know yeah. and and so yeah i mean that, that i think that's that's definitely one of the reasons uh, i would say um amongst other reasons but i, I th there's a shift coming there's a shift coming it's so pal palpable um within people and and also like it was just mentioned about the sort of biohacking or the this whole sort of movement that's going on around the world there's a real a real sort of desperate need for for a different way of approaching health and well-being than the traditional pharmaceutical uh route you know what's really really wonderful and of course you've experienced this is the fact that people have become in certainly over the last let's say two or three years have become so open to homeopathy, not just brushing it off, but actually, oh, tell me more, or let me learn something, or let me even try something. And, you know, this takes us on to the home prescriber kit, of course, and 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 your sort of objective here and goal. But it's so nice to see that. And you've mentioned, you know, all this... Um, uh, all these seminars and workshops and conferences and... and uh, uh, what do they... Like fairs, uh, which yeah. are going on around the world to do with health. And empowerment. So people are very much into taking health into their own hands. And there's so much material out there now anyway, isn't there? So Absolutely. it's just like saying um, you can read a few books, you know, and you can, as far as homeopathy is concerned, you can get really um, a real idea of what it is and the possibilities that exist. And uh, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? But again, with what you've said, you know, uh, with nanotechnology and biotech and, and there's so much going on, isn't it? From how to control yeah. your diabetes to measuring blood pressure and and being very independent with healthcare, like everything else. Absolutely. And and I think, you know, the shift happened as we, you know, as we know during the pandemic. And I think the, the, the biggest thing with the pandemic for, for a lot of people, not everybody, obviously, but for a lot of people, I think what happened is it really woke people up. And, it, and I think it really shocked people that, People have always presume that medical science will be there to rescue them. The worst could happen, medical science would be there to rescue them. And in that first year of the pandemic, there was nothing available except for stay in your house, wear a mask, and don't go out. And I think that really shocked people. And people realized that they they had to really start taking charge of their own health and well-being because there was nobody there to save them. Mm. But but really that's what but we should be taking responsibility of our health and well-being. We shouldn't rely on anybody else. We, we need to invest the time, the energy, and the attention on our health and well-being and be very conscious about what we put on our bodies and what we put on the bodies of our children, be that food, be that medication. You know, every single drug has a side effect. Every pharmaceutical drug has a side effect. And people, you know, have to realize that we need to, which was homeopathy, really stimulating the body to heal itself. That's to me what homeopathy does. It stimulates the body to heal itself. All that natural healing wisdom we're ever going to need is within us. And what we need to do is stimulate that. Now that in Chinese medicine, that would be uh, qi. In Ayurveda, that'd be prana. In homeopathy, it's the vital force. But those remedies that we use in homeopathy, and you Probably sick people hit sick of me saying this, but I say it over and over again. The keys to a lock, that's all the, the keys to a lock. But the wisdom, the healing wisdom is within everybody. It's innate. It's in you. It's in me. It's in everybody. And that to me is an incredibly empowering thing to know that you've already got it. Absolutely agree with you. And it's also testament to how with you know you mentioned the pandemic and you and the, the fear that fear for a year is a, such a long time and you know trying to it's it's 
I think it, you know, in I can't say it was a good thing, but the the looking back on it, um, as far as well being is concerned, as far as uh, you know, health care is concerned, it was good for people coming out of the pandemic because they realized what you've just so beautifully mentioned that you know, hang on, I need to rely on myself. Yes. You know, what am I going to do if I'm left alone again? Because already there's been talk that you know there may be many more pandemics in the future. Uh, you know, it's it's out there. That news is out there. But it's interesting, isn't it, where that takes you and the thought process, but also the journey. Because it's not then just, for example, homeopathy. It's lifestyle changes and the type of foods that we eat and the nutrition that we're putting in our body. Absolutely. I, I mean, to me, you know, I I, I talk a lot about this because often with clients and patients, they'll say, well, what do I what do I need to do around lifestyle? And I always talk about these four pillars. Um, um, you know, the first one is is meditation or mindfulness. And that should be part of our lives. You know, there's so much studies now. I mean, it's not even questioned about the effect of meditation on our health and our immune system. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely crucial. I mean, look, we, we, especially in the UK, we've got this mental health epidemic at the moment, you know, amongst young people, older people. I mean, the biggest cause of death now for the men under the age of 50 is suicide. Yeah, how that, sad that is as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's an epidemic and we we need to be talking about that. Um, but so things like meditation, mindfulness now, which it's now, um, which it's now sort of, um, uh, that's the word coined. Oh, uh, yeah. I still like the word meditation. I've been meditating for 30 years. I still like the word meditation. But but to me, it's an important part of, of one of those pillars. The second one is exercise or, uh, or movement. You know, we need to move. Now, people are much more conscious about this now than they ever were before. But people can exercise and go to the gym, which is great. But then you need different types of exercise in different times of your life. You know, I'm, I'm 53 now. I need to do more strength exercise. That's what I need to focus on and strength and uh, um, more than anything else. Um, but movement anyway, you know, movement on every, you know, most of us sit, most of us sit down most of the time. We need to move. Mm. Um, I've just done a very interesting thing at the moment where I've been I've been uh, monitoring my glucose levels. I've got a thing on my arm. I've been monitoring it for the past two weeks to see, and it gives you you know minute by minute um, accurate, accurate reading of your blood, blood glucose in your body and the spikes that you get. Now, what was interesting when I'm in my office uh, when I'm like this on the computer most of the time, uh, guess what? I get big spikes. Mm. Okay, because I'm not moving. I went to London last week for two days. I'm moving around all the time. No spikes at all. So, you know, we have to move. And that means moving every half an hour, 45 minutes, set a little thing on your phone or your alarm, your alarm to move. It's so crucial. Um, and then there's, there's, there's diet and nutrition. People say, well, what shall I eat? And I say, well, start off eating real food. Well, what do you mean? Well, if it comes out of a box, so it's not real food. Mm. Eat real food. In other words, if your great grandmother saw it, she'd recognize it. OK, that's real food. Now, I'm not saying you've got to live like, you know, perfect, but 80 percent of the, what you eat should be real food and you can have a little bit of a cheat on the 20 percent. And then the last one is sleep. Now, again, there's so much being written about sleep. It is the most important thing of all of what we've just talked about, mm. uh, the ability to sleep and sleep well and sleep deeply and, and be able to go into deep sleep, be able to go into uh, REM sleep. So, so crucial for that, for everything else that we do. Um, you know, and all, all our bodily functions from the endocrine system to everything. So to me, we've also got to be doing that as well. You're right. And these things, just little things done every single day, being consistent every single day, being conscious every single day, not obsessive, but conscious, because we don't go off track a mile at a time. We go off track an inch at a time. I love what you've just said, you know, with mindfulness, um, or should I say meditation, uh, exercise, diet, nutrition, and and sleep, and four pillars, you know, to to a healthy lifestyle. But it, it it's interesting that um, uh, you know, without uh, going into the 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 age groups here, but certainly nowadays, when I talk to patients and I mention um, diet and nutrition and the importance, and I say, you know, there's something called a smoothie, and they say, oh yeah, we already have a smoothie, and we put spinach in there and raspberries and 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 whatnot, you know, and celery, and I'm and I'm always taken aback because I'm thinking, this wasn't like this a few years ago, oh. 
And now everybody knows what a healthy smoothie is and what, I don't know, whatever yeah how powders are available you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. what to put in so it's interesting isn't it how people's um how people have gone on this journey because it's a journey that you take you can't just switch overnight no. right no um but how they they are actually empowering themselves to say Do you know what i don't want to put that junk in my body all the time and yeah. um like you've so rightly said if it comes out of a box or even a tin it's not pure it's not going to be it's not possible for it to be no and when you look at you know, when we look at food and, and if you look at the way, I mean, the big thing at the moment, well, it's been for a while now, but it's turmeric, isn't it? Mm, yeah. The big thing. But what people don't realize is that with turmeric, it works better when it's with black pepper. I think it increases its strength, by, uh, its efficiency by 2000%. And then if you have it with fat as well. Now look at, look at t- traditional Indian cooking, for example, it's got all that in there. Mm. It's like, you know, <laughs> we've been known this for thousands of years that, that the food that we eat and the way that it's put together you know what food is be like your food by your medicine you know i think hippocrates said that i think that like food by their medicine so you know i i agree with you i think people are much more aware and that's because of social media it's never been as easy to get information as it as it has been now mm. um so but listen there's also some not great information out there as well we, we have to be so you have to be you have to be able to have discrimination and be able to discriminate but I think the good measure is if you try it and it works, then stick with it. If it helps you, then stick with it. Um, but it's not, you know, you've got to find your own way in it. And like you said, you've got to just introduce things bit by bit by bit. But once you start on that journey and you feel better, I mean, I have a whole routine. I mean, you know, from the moment I wake up in the morning, I, I take a thing called methylene blue. And if you've come across methylene blue yeah. before, mm-hmm. take methylene blue. Very good for careful. migraines, by the way. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's just an amazing thing to take methylene blue. <laughs> it's a weird one to get your head around when you first start taking it, and and it goes everywhere. You got to be careful because it stains everything. But but that's amazing. Then I'll do red light therapy uh, because then with I have a red light box and I'll sit in front for twenty minutes, and that because the methylene blue goes into the goes into every cell. I mean, it's an incredible thing. And then the red light really magnifies the effect of that. I have a cold, I do a cold water ice bath every day. Ooh. incredible absolutely incredible i mean one thing i'd say to anybody if you haven't got an ice bath do a cold shower um but there's something about the ice bath which takes it to a whole different level so it's just having these routines that you have every day in order to enhance your health and well-being so i think it's, it's crucial now for those listening to this episode uh, of course you're listening to the audio but i would ask you to head over to my instagram like underscore treats like and have a look at the trailers which uh, are the video-based trailers with Marcus, because trust me, he mentioned he was 53 years old, but he looks no older than 45. And I've never seen a <laughs> oh, homeopath. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> I've never seen a homeopath with such gleaming skin. It's glowing. <laughs> it's it's radiating. Yeah. You've got to tell me what the secret is. Is it? It's well, the it, part, isn't it? <laughs> the, the, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, but it's all the it's all the above. You know, it's 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 having a routine and sticking with the routine and. And, um, you know, I ain't perfect by any means, but it's really, I mean, I've been uh, on this thing since I was 20, you know, uh, I'm not saying it was been a perfect journey in those periods, but, you know, I I, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I, you know, I, I, I want to be feel healthy. I want to feel mm. vibrant. I, I want to, you know, I've got young kids. I, I want to be vibrant for them as well. So I, it's just doing things every single day. I think it's the consistency. Don't get overwhelmed. Just do little things every day that enhance our health and well-being. I think what's so inspiring, Marcus, is the fact that as homeopaths, and this is true, we can get very caught up and sometimes, um, you know, for the sake of serving humanity, for the sake of looking after our patients, and we can be up at odd hours, you know, doing uh, repertorizing cases or doing research on remedies, etc. But it's so nice to see that you give yourself priority as well. It's not just... To, uh, give 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 it's like well there's some me time and i think that's so important isn't it nowadays absolutely yeah and i think you're right because you know doing this sort of work we we te- we know well we naturally we, we are we're, you know we're we we are givers we want to help people we want to mm. help people all the time and and but you have to take you have to look after yourself because i've seen too many homeopaths not do that and become very sick yeah. And, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be like that. I, to me, to me, you can only, 
you can only take people as far as you're at. You can't take them any further. So the more that I think as practitioners that we are walking the talk, uh, to me, then we're much more in alignment about what we do. Um, you know, we, we I want to go, I want to go, if I'm sick, I want to go and see somebody who's healthier than I am. <laughs> I want to know what they've done. I want to know what they do and what, what, what they're doing, because I can then learn from that. And I think to me, it just makes sense. I, 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 it just common sense to me. If I'm in the health and well-being space, I need to be constantly looking at health and well-being and seeing not only ways I can help myself, because then I can help my clients. I can share things with clients, you know. So um, I think it's, you know, it's part of being a practitioner, a part of being a health practitioner. I, I think of myself as a health practitioner rather than just a homeopath. Hmm. Um because that's what that's what we do. I li I like that. I like the way you 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 put that. You know, health practitioner. You know, it. Uh, I was talking to somebody recently, um, a, a friend of mine, a homeopath, and I spoke to him, and I said, "Oh, where you know everything okay?" And you know, I, I, whoever comes on the show, they become friends. So I always keep in touch. You know, I know it's yeah. not possible all the time, but certainly every three months yeah. or four, you keep in touch, right? And I. He said, no, it was a total burnout and I had to re I had to evaluate what was going on. And to be perfectly honest, I, I generally don't share about myself, but I was very close to that a um, few months back, you know, burnout because of uh, so many things. You know, Marcus, how busy life yep. is when you're a yeah, yeah. health practitioner, right? And uh, yep. and I really took time to reevaluate and I said, OK, well, hang on. What can I reduce and how can I improve myself, you know, and get healthier and healthier and healthier? And it would just took that that time to reevaluate things. And there were things I realized I was doing I didn't need to do. No. There were things I could streamline. There were things I could plan better. Um and it it worked really, really well. And exercise you mentioned and meditation, so, so important. I changed my my diet, my nutrition. I improved it and I wasn't bad, but no. you know, I just streamlined it even more, made it yeah. more efficient for me. And it's so important, you know, you've said this, and you're a prime example, of course, uh, as someone who gives time to themselves. And of course, it shows again, I'll mention it, you know, perfect skin there, the vibe, <laughs> vi the vital force is beaming, because you can see and that's really, really good. Because as homeopaths, we get we we take energy, don't we from patients? Absolutely. Yeah. But I can take energy from you. As an example, I don't want to embarrass you, but you know, because it's you can feel it. You can feel that energy and this this purity of it. You know, and well, that, I think so, yeah, and I think it's about connection. And listen, I'll, I'll share. I mean, you know, poor oh, how long ago would it have been? Probably twenty odd years ago. Um, I burnt out from, from hmm. homeopathy. I, I can remember I was seeing patients every half an hour. I'd start at seven o'clock in the morning. This was when I was based in uh, my practice in London. Uh, and where people, before people went to work and I, I'd work till 10 o'clock at night mm. and I would do that four or five days a week. And I remember that I remember the day that, that I was seeing a, a particular patient and I just felt empty inside. I just felt like I had nothing more to give. And so I'd take some time off and I had, I think I'd burnt out, um, because of the need of trying to help people, uh, and, and wanting to help people. And, you know, with homeopathy, what homeopathy can do. Um, but sometimes um, when you're not aware of it or you, in a way, sort of suppress those feelings that that you can hear that voice. It's like, you know, if you don't listen to your body when it whispers, you're going to hear it when it screams. Mm. And, and and when we don't listen to ourselves, um, we end up in all sorts of trouble. So I had to take two or three months off. And then I re-looked at my practice and said, I can't do this like this anymore. I, I had to adjust the way how I saw people. And it wasn't every half an hour anymore. Those days are gone. But so I think, you know, we, we, all these things are wake up calls. They're all wake up calls and it's our body's way or vital forces way of communicating with us saying, Hey, look, there's a problem here. If it's... we are feeling overwhelmed or we're feeling anxious or we're all those things that, that can happen. And we, we have to listen to it. We have to listen to it. It's so, so important. And, um, it also shows you, you know, as I mean, we're, we're, we're slightly off tangent, but it's an, it's an fascinating conversation. But as homeopaths, a homeopath cannot be a homeopath without having compassion and love for humanity and empathy, because that's 90% of the work, right? The remedies are yeah. just the the last bit of that yeah. transaction as such, you know, that, yeah. that experience. Um, 
but we need to be careful. We need to, and I'm, and I am coming across more and more people who have said the same thing that they're reevaluating themselves because there's only so many patients you can physically see. There's only so many people you can talk to in a day. Yeah, you need your time, definitely hundred percent. You need family time, and then there's everything else. And you, of course, you also need social time. Yeah, uh, that's also important, isn't it? To talk to absolutely. people. absolutely. Connection. Yeah. yeah. You look at any of those blue zones, you know, the blue zones where they looked at longevity around the world, the social connection is, is so, so important as well as having purpose and meaning. Mm. So, so, you know, there's a variety of things. Like I said, it can't just be about diet. It's not just about this. And it's not, it's having been truly holistic mind, body, and soul of, of looking at ourselves and looking at really where, where we may be lacking in certain areas because it's not perfect all of the time. You know, we all have down days, we all have up days, we all have mm. different days. But like you said, that social connection is important because we need to connect. We're human beings. We, we need that connection. And if, again, going back to the lockdown, if it taught us anything, how much we do need that human connection, you know, heart to heart, soul to soul. I remember during lockdown when we couldn't obviously see people or we had to keep a, a distance how how actually tr not just traumatic but it was really emotionally challenging yeah and you know it goes back to this um the place that we're in now where we can socialize and i do come across many people i'm sure it's the same for you marcus where they say oh it's okay i'd rather be at home you know it's it's fine but it's so important we're social animals we're social yeah. creatures you know we we need to talk to people you can't just live as a hermit you know no no exactly not, yeah. yeah yeah no no you're right we, we need that like i said it's we need that connection and can you get connection over zoom like we're having right now yes as one level of connect there's just different levels of connection yeah isn't it i mean look at i mean i was seeing patients uh over well i was using skype and zoom before the even the lockdown and and it's a great way of getting people to speak to people who can't travel or in different countries. Fantastic. Same with teaching. We do online courses. We do classroom-based training. Face-to-face -face is always going to be better. You can never, you, that's always, it's always going to be the best way because we, we, like I said, we're social creatures. We, that connection that we have with each other is, is, is so important. So I think that's also part of, of health. You know, you're right. It's, it's part of health and, and, and we need to to socialize in some way. Now, I wanted to ask you something very, um, very current. You've mentioned it already as far as the mental health. And it's on one side, it's for those who aren't aware, it's absolutely incredible that over 220 odd years ago, uh, you know, the founder of homeopathy came across certain remedies which are still being used today to treat and rebalance emotional disturbances, mental health conditions, whatever they may be, a myriad of them. What's your take on the current situation? Because there's so many people who put on a brave face, as Jan Scholten says, you know, personalities, mm. um, different types of personalities. And you can show a personality where you're very happy, but you're totally broken inside. Or you're very yeah. sad. You know, what would you, what would, What's your wisdom here? You know, what's the way forward for people? Because it's becoming really worrying as a trend. So many people are are really hurt inside. And they sometimes they don't even know what it is that's actually causing it or what triggered it. They just mm -hmm. feel empty, for want of a better word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think uh, what's happening at the moment, there's I think we more people got more awareness in society than ever before. Uh, the ability to talk about mental health is is much more um, acceptable these days mm. to talk about it. Is there more issues with mental health than there was 20 years ago, 50 years ago? I don't know, because if it wasn't talked about and people kept it inside, it's very difficult to know. I mean, I think about people that came back from the war, like my grandparents, for example. In fact, it was my grandmother's 99th birthday uh, the other day, and I went to see her. And... Um, I said to, you know, you know, 99 years, I said, well, you know, what advice would you give that you've learned in those 99 years? And she said straight away, don't worry. Don't worry. The things that you think are, are, are really bad, she said, they, it, it's, it's, it will pass. 
often you worry we worry about things and there's no need to worry in the first place what's that quote and this too shall pass um so I thought that was quite wise advice. Easy, easier said than done, though, sometimes. <laughs> so, so, but at that generation, they went through the war. They went through um, terrible things that they saw. But they, I remember my grandfather, I'd ask him about it. He never, he never talked about it. Never talked about the war. Didn't want to talk about the war. Didn't talk about it. And you think, well, where did all that, where did all that go? Where did all that trauma go? Where did all that um, pain and suffering? And I, I don't know. And I don't know what the answer is, but but today it's much more talked about. So I think it, it, I don't know whether it is more than it was or people are just much more, be, you know, feel comfortable to talk about it. Um, so I don't really know what the answer, what, what the answer is. I just think that we do need to talk about things. We do mm. need to share it, particularly men. I think, as I mentioned, you know, the biggest cause of death of men at the age of 50 is suicide. I'm doing a podcast actually at the moment. I'm recording a podcast which is going to be released in September, which is nothing to do with homeopathy. It's just it's about men talking. It's called Beyond the Shed. Uh, because as you know in the UK, the shed is where often men will go and retreat to. Um, and this is called <laughs> Beyond the Shed. It's actually in a shed. We've recorded it in a shed. And we've got different men from different walks of life talking about being a man in the 21st century and the challenges that men face. Um, it's been a fascinating, fascinating podcast series recording it. Um, but it, cause men, as you know, don't rarely, rarely will talk mm. or if you have an issue and, and what's come out of this podcast and these interviews has been quite phenomenal, quite phenomenal. And there's a certain magic has happened. I feel, uh, during these interviews, um, and you'll be, I'll, I'll let you know when it gets released in September, it's called beyond the shed, but it's, a, it's, a, it's we've really we've really connected with something here with men and men feeling comfortable to talk with other men and being very open actually very very open about about how they feel about certain issues and things you know so, i've got a i've got a smile on my face as you're saying that and the reason is what a brilliant idea that really is kudos you know that's brilliant well it came about where when i i I was talking with, with a um, somebody I know who around a mental health app for men because there's not really much out there for men. Mm. Uh, a lot for women, but not so much for men. And I'm from that. And then my, my son's 13 and he's in those teenage years. And as you know, when you have kids, you tend to sort of relive your childhood. And mm. I was thinking, well, what world is he coming into? You know, what is this world he's coming into as, as a young man? Then I started to talk about different men. And I know this from having male clients as well. And I suddenly realized that there was a, a real need of a safe space for men to talk. And again, you know, sometimes we just talk about football. We'll talk about this, different things. But then, it, you know, the, the conversation will turn. And sometimes it talks about, you know, being a dad. Well, it's like being a dad. What's it like having a son? What's it like? What was your childhood like? What was it like? There's all these different things that come up in a very organic way. But it's been amazing. And doing it in a shed um, it, it's been really fascinating uh, to, to do it. But we've had such, such great, great, great conversations. But the thing is, I think I'm learning so much about myself being a man. You know, it, it's the, this is what's really interesting that two or three, you know, even a couple of days after the interviews, and these interviews can run for an hour and a half. We just, we just talk. Mm. But what's really interesting is the impact that it has on me as well, doing it as, as, as the, as the host. So yeah, watch out for that. I'll let you know when that gets released and um, it'd, be, it'd be very, very interesting to see what the impact it has. But what's interesting, the guys that we've got doing the audio visual on the studio, cause we built a studio as a shed in London, um, how much they've been impacted. In fact, one of the guys said when he started the project with us, he was, he didn't tell us this. He's been depressed for two years. Mm. And he said, through these in, doing these interviews and, and, and videoing them and doing the, doing the AV, he said it's had a huge impact in his life. Huge impact. I said, every episode he's filmed, he's got something out of it. And he said, now, he said, it, I, just, I just want to be around this all the time. You know, it's just helped him so much. So was, that was really lovely. A bit lost for words, actually, because I think it, what, you, what you've done is, is going to be absolutely incredible. I can't wait to listen to it. And in fact, send me some promos and reels oh, and, we will and i'll make sure that i yeah. i really get it out there you know yeah 
And is it a series? We'll get you on there as well. We'll come in. You can come down and we'll you can come to the studio and we'll interview you. Yeah, that'd be nice. They also give us a chance to meet up as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So yeah, let's see what happens. And it, it's just lovely. It's, it's you know what? It's, and we have men of all different ages, all different ages, uh, young men, older men, different, you know, different uh, sort of ethnic backgrounds. And it's just what the common thing is is about being a man what it is to because it's a very confusing time for men at the moment mm. it's like men don't really and as particularly younger guys I, you know we hear they don't really know how to be anymore or, or how they're supposed to be in society and or how society perceives them and and the things that men do um do face i think from violence i mean we have a guy who who, who did 17 years in prison for for um drug dealing he's come out he's writing a book about his life and trying to stop younger guys going into the same, you know, mm. with some really, really interesting uh, um, uh, conversations. Um, uh, and that guy who got uh, diagnosed stage four cancer, um, esophageal cancer and, and uh, his journey. And then his journey with his friend, because his, his friends there as well within the interview, been friends for 37 years. And they suddenly realized within the podcast that they never really spoke properly about what it meant you know, from a friend mm. being diagnosed and the process he's gone through. So it was about friendship with men and how men are in friendship. So it's really, really, really lovely, very touching and very moving. And this is a series, an ongoing series? series yeah. So we're just recording the first 12, 12, lot, you know, 12 episodes per series. And this is uh, not part of CHE, right? Nothing this is to do with CHE, nothing yeah. to do with homeopathy. Yeah. It's just, it's beyond the shed. It's conversation, Brilliant. and we call it beyond the shed because we wanted it was conversations that were just more than the just mundane conversations or yeah. conversation you would have in a shed. Um, so uh, it's called beyond the shed. So yeah, it's it, interesting, it's, isn't it, Marcus? Because I was just picturing that these type of conversations, you you cannot have them sitting in any you know at a cafe or whatever it is. You know, you need a quiet place. You need to you know you, you spoke about meditation and sitting in a quiet place amongst people where the trust builds up is part exactly. of meditation, isn't it? Because exactly. you are experiencing that same energy level and that vibration. That's right. And I think, you know, we, I and mean, this has come up on some of the podcasts around mentors and elders and how, um, you know, a lot of guys don't have that, you know, mm. and, and what will tend to happen is that when men have an issue they will retreat within themselves and very rarely will ask for help if they're in, if they're in, you know, a, a dark place or a troubled place. And, and, you know, it's, in fact, we had one chap who um, was talking about suicide. It was, I think it was a friend of his that committed suicide. Um, he, he'd seen him a couple of days before, you know, in the streets and chatted about football and different things. And, you know, and then two days later he committed suicide and, and, it was, he just said he just couldn't believe it. And, and at the service in the church, he was sort of more, he was at the front and he, and the church was full. He was only a young guy. And he said, he thought to himself, if he'd only knew how much people loved him, if he'd only knew how much people really loved him. And, and this chap, Tom, he was a barber and he decided he wanted to do something about it. And he said, as a barber, he's sort of like a therapist anyway. So he, um, he set up this thing called the Barbers, the Lions Barbers Collective. It's a charity uh, where they train barbers to look, watch, look out for. Um, he said because there's a when you're seeing your male clients, you're seeing them every couple of weeks. Sometimes so you get to them really well over the mm. years, so you can spot things if they're not, you know, particularly okay or they're acting a bit not okay. Training barbers to spot some of these signs, um, not being therapists themselves, but then they can sign. They, they can, you know point them in the right direction if they need any help so yeah that was a that was a lovely uh, podcast this is uh, really fascinating i i can't wait to listen to this now you've obviously you got me guaranteed and so many of my friends as well so yeah, yeah congratulations on that and actually should i say more than congratulations thank you for for coming up with something like this i think it's so needed and um <clears throat> in fact you you i'm sure you've you're also going to agree with this, but now recently, not recently, but over the last couple of years, I've very much started to express what I feel about somebody. Mm. So, you know, I will tell them that they're yeah. a good person. Uh, you know, I it, there's nothing wrong with them, but, you know, I just think that, look, I may not be here tomorrow, right? I don't know how long li a life I have. 
So if I feel love and compassion for somebody, or I feel that somebody's done something which I'll never forget, you know, I tell them, I, I remind yeah. them, I said, listen, I'll never forget what you yeah. did for me. Or, yeah. or thank you, you know, you did this for somebody. And you know what, it means a lot for others. Yeah. And and I think more and more people, you know, you mentioned this thing that men are very, we are closed up. Yeah. But I think it, the time has come certainly now to share those feelings, you know. I, I think so. And share them with other men. I mean, this <laughs> is the thing. So this is what I've realized in this conversations that we've been having in the podcast. It's about it's talking with other men, mm. you know, and, and, and there's something in that. There's something sacred, just like women talking with women. Mm. It's a, it's a space. It's a sacred space, which throughout history we have done. Yet we, I don't know. I, I think, you know, through, again, through society and through the way that we live our lives, not like lack of socializing, <laughs> all the things we're talking mm. about, you know, or especially men, I mean, or young men and boys, they often need men, they need role models, they need mentors. It's like it's part, I see it with my son and his in his soccer, you know, his football team and, and the coaches, and they look up to the coaches and they, you know, these are role models and, and, and it's, it's, that's what often boys need and young men need. So again, hopefully, you know, even if one of those conversations has an impact, then we've done our job. Um, and hopefully, like I said, you know, help stop this epidemic of one in, you know, of, of this suicide rate with men under the age of 50, because to me, it's an epidemic and we, we have got to do something about it as men. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, what a wonderful way to end this episode. I, I again, I thank you so much for for mentioning this, for highlighting this, and talking about it, and actually doing something about it, which is to to create this podcast beyond the shed. And uh, I hope it's uh, it's life changing and life saving yep. for, for for those men that will listen to it. Thank you so so much for that, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful conversation. Thank you. It's my, it's my pleasure, and uh, and thank you, Atik, for doing the this health podcast, you know, I think people listening, if you've never done a podcast, you don't realize what effort and time and effort goes into doing a podcast. It is, it's hard work. It looks easy, but it's from having done a couple as in running, running a couple of podcasts is not easy by any means. So, so thank you. Oh, no, that's very kind of you. For those who may not know, though I have mentioned previously as well, because Marcus has been on previously on the homeopathy health show, um, he hosts the Home Prescriber podcast. Again, it's available on the podcast platforms and um, talking about remedies, actually. So if you want to get the real deal, the real lowdown on remedies, very, um, how should I put it, very streamlined, very effective, where you'll actually end up remembering the remedies themselves as far as homeopathy is concerned, do check out the Home Prescriber and uh Marcus himself is a legend anyway, okay? So you have to listen to it. <laughs> Thank you. Marcus Fernandez, absolute honor, absolute Thank pleasure. You. And I will talk to you um, hopefully down the line because I know that uh, we what we need to talk about a few very other important things, but I won't spoil it for the listeners just yet. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I do hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the Homeopathy Health Show. Please do support the show by clicking follow on my socials Remember, the more exposure the podcast receives, the better for homeopathy around the world. You can find me on Instagram by searching for at like underscore treats like and on both Facebook and TikTok by searching for at like treats like. So let's promote the voice of homeopathy on radio and podcast around the world together. Don't forget to visit me online at www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast tab. Here you'll be able to see all the guests that have joined me on the show so far. And of course, you can stream on demand the latest episode to your mobile, tablet or PC. Until next time, stay safe and take care.